Two Works For You, we're very committed to bringing you stories about school safety all year long. A big part of that is understanding students and how their brains work. As part of our Project Safe Schools initiative, Two Works For You anchor Travis Guillory takes an in-depth look at why children misbehave and what red flags to look out for to spot a potential problem. It's in a child's nature to act out, whether it be to get attention or to get a reaction. But at what point does bad behavior become a more serious problem? Yeah, I mean, I think oftentimes bad behavior um, is a disruption in the child's life, whether that be in school or at home or with peers. Um, so in some area of their life, they're not able to um, kind of get along um, with how things are going and what is expected of them. OSU assistant clinical professor Dr. Sarah Coffey says each child is different and it's important to understand what leads up to certain behaviors. Um, oftentimes we talk about ABC, the antecedent, what happened before, the behavior, kind of what happened, and then the consequence. But do kids really think about the consequences of their actions? Um, there are some kids that might notice that the consequence is something that they want, so it might become more habitual. Um, but again, I think it's important for us to, to understand that the behavior has meanings, and as adults, it's our job to really figure that out because kids are, are trying to learn from us kind of what's going on. And how much they can get away with. With all of our kids, we want them to test the limits a little bit. Um, that's part of growing up. It's a developmental process of seeing a, a little bit of what I can get away with. But Dr. Coffey says there comes a point where it goes from a child just acting out to there being a deeper rooted issue. When it does become persistent, um, in spite of multiple interventions and kind of talking with kids, and whenever it's disrupting their ability to learn, disrupting their ability to kind of engage with peers or with really other people, then it's important for parents and caregivers to make sure that they're seeking out support. And the red flags aren't always big and obvious like physical violence or thoughts of suicide or substance abuse in adolescence. Sometimes it's the little not so in your face things you have to look out for like a decline in school performance, not getting along with peers or even refusing to go to school. You know, every once in a while we might have a bad day and not want to go to work or go to school, but if a kid is consistently not wanting to go to school, having a lot of stomach aches, headaches that aren't explained by other physical ailments, um, I'd be concerned about uh, an emotional health diagnosis. Dr. Coffey says if parents see tendencies like this, the first step is to talk to your pediatrician or your primary care doctor. But she says the best course of action is conversation. So it's important for us to, to start at an early age to talk about feelings of anger or hurt or sadness and making sure that caregivers are a, an open source of communication with kids. Travis Guillory, too, works for you. Now we plan to keep this conversation on campus security and student well-being going throughout the year. If you have a story that you'd like us to look into, just email us at projectsafeschools at kjrh.com.